I'm Ross Stead, or Stephen of the family Aspinall, from Burnley, Lancashire, England, obviously. <laughs> that, that's the landmass, <laughs> not the corporation. My background is, for, since 1996, I've made me live in Bargro in the hemp plant, yeah? Which is not harming anybody and we're all entitled to free trade, uh, levy exchange, trade and barter, yeah? yeah? I went to see a mate of mine called Matt. Uh, I've met the guy on a plumbing course when I was training to be a plumber, yeah? Now the guy who was kind enough, he was a ga Korg engineer, uh, plumber, yeah, and gas fitter, and it, we, he, he gives a lift as we do it as apprentice, and he taught us a lot, yeah, so I know this guy, we an educated man, you know, a few years older than myself. Anyway, when I went to see Matt, with the, with, which was a young lad, who did the training with, he, he turned around and told me that I could grow lo weed lawfully, yeah, and told me about this Magna Carta, and obviously my first response was, <laughs> You know where, kiss it, you know what I mean. So after two weeks I come back into area, I went to see Matthew, he got, he run Pete, I went down to see Pete, he ended up brilliant man, downloaded a load of files for me, yeah, gave me a lot of information to watch, which a lot was Rob Menard, hero, yeah, and I watched, we learning his stuff, understanding the legal fiction, and of course, <laughs> Every, t every time I was reading and finding out more, I was getting more and more mad because of the way they'd been treating me over the years and classing me as an outlaw when it's actually them who's the outlaws and the villains, yeah, the more you read and understand what's actually going on, yeah. So then I started reading it, yeah, and started understanding it more and more, yeah, until, and this is what you've got, you know, anyone who is interested in going into this, you must really get and understand the f the, the basic thing, and that is your legal fiction, and the difference between yourself being a man and not being the fictional name, yeah? And I think that's very important, you know, because that's the key to everything, isn't it? Once you've got that understanding, you can progress to another level. Now, I just thought, right, I can learn a bit, step out of society and get on with doing what I've been doing, but at least it'd be lawful. But of course, then, you have to test things, yeah, so our paperwork we're done, I did a deed, I wrote to the Queen, the two affidavits, I claim me, 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 uh, claim a right, yeah, which is basically making your own law, yeah, and having a contract between yourself and the private corporation known as United Kingdom, yeah, and then I also served the private contract to the uh, Prime Minister, which was Gordon Brown at the time. Yeah, stating that I was withdrawing all consent to legislation and rules, and in fact that I was not a legal fiction. I was a living man with a big soul, yeah? Because you've got to look, the word person is a very interesting word, yeah? Because it basically means the human body with no soul, yeah? And it also means corporation as well, which is why you can never actually own anything as a person. So whatever you think you own, you don't really own. The United Kingdom, is a company. It might as well be Tesco's, Asda, yeah? That private company, yeah, has a contract to the name, which is a legal fiction, yeah? Now, if you claim to be the name, the legal fiction, you're contracted under all legislative rule, yeah? It's like working for a company, yeah? So, when you actually write in, and when I wrote to the Prime Minister, another affidavit, explaining that we'd, we'd revoked all legislate, my consent to re legislated rule, yeah, which brought me into this common law rule, at this, yeah, then I'm not working for the corporation, the United Kingdom, I actually live in a landmass known as England, and has been known as England for a long time, or Britain, yeah, I don't live in the United Kingdom, it is impossible. Well, my first experience, yeah, is, because I used to uh, be a footballer in the 80s and all this, <laughs> I know I've had still a lot of friends in there, and now I'd informed this about what was going on, yeah, and so I'd only seen about three times in three months, because I was in studying, yeah, and learning the law. So, I'd, I'd, me being me, I won't shut up about it, and I'm drilling in about this law, that law, this law, and they're all looking at me as though I'm daft, as usual, that. <laughs> anyway, um, 
what I did then is I thought, right, they're always surrounded with police and get annoying, you know, even if they're doing no. So it was a football match, so what I did is I let the, we were playing Leeds actually, so there was a massive police presence, and they'd all surrounded the lads in the pub. So what I did, they were, they were riot police there, they were out with cameras, surrounded the pub, bands, everything like they usually do. There were a gap between two black mariahs, so what I did is I went and parked in between them, yeah? Then I went into a pub, to see my mates, and when I come, I said to him, they were moving to another pub. So when I come out, I said, oh, I'll give you a lift. I, I walked out, this policeman says, oh, policy enforcement officer, should I say, shouts to me, is this your motor vehicle? But to me reply, well, no, it's my automobile. So he said, because it were on double yellow lines, he said, what do these lines mean to you? I said, well, actually, they mean go to me. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> yeah? He said, do what? I said, they actually mean go to me. I'm a freeman on the land, I stand on the common law only, yeah? That's a legislative rule, it's no, no standing over there. He said, what's your name? I said, I haven't got any. Uh, I'm, I'm called Stephen, what's your surname? I said, I haven't got a surname. He said, what's your surname? I said, I've got a family name. He said, what's your name? I said, I'm not a ship or a vessel. And I can't, I, I can't remember, I, I couldn't even count at the time. Yeah. So then, um, if you're going to be like that, we're going to take you down. I said, well, that's fine, but I'll, I'll just have to warn you. I'll come, I'll, I've got a fee schedule, £5,000 an hour, £5,000 if you want to handcuff me. I said, I would gain all my inalienable rights, went through what you've got, you know, I don't know if people know what to say, but it's something you've got to learn, yeah? And then I asked him if he wanted to contract by offering me hands, to which he refused for some reason. <laughs> then, he, then after 40, I, at the t I pulled my dictaphone out to record the situation, yeah, which he wasn't happy, and he tried to get it off me. So I started looking at his number, yeah, he's trying to get off me. The response of the old bill was to come mob handed it all the mufti squad from here to see what was going on. So I turned around to them, start, di I'm the dick to phone it. I'm a freeman on the land, I stand on the common law only. If you want to get involved, come and get involved. Yeah, but you, you know. And so they eventually left because they must have got a lot enough of that, yeah. And then I went back to the copper and carried on. Yeah, I, I ended up giving my name, Mr. Stephen, yeah, and I've got a family name, you write it as a family name, yeah. yeah. I can tell you that I was born as a man, yeah, and as a free man at that, yeah. So he ended up giving me a producer, which I, I told him, there's no point giving it to me. As I was signing, I put under protest the arrest without, uh, without prejudice, which means it can't be used in court, yeah. Signed it as Stephen of the family hospital. Yeah, so he was happy to give me that. He never gave me hope for parking up double yellow lines for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, after 40 minutes, all my mates had left me by the way, saying, "Oh no, it was all that Freeman stuff over there for ages," and they went on to the next pub. <laughs> yeah, so then I ends up um, getting into the car and he's watching me through. When then I just tore the ticket up and drove off, and that was it. Yeah, I don't know if I got a fine or not for it. See, myself being myself, and which I advise everybody not to do, and this is, yeah, don't do what I did. Every time I see the traffic ward and I sat there and wait until they put a ticket on, usually putting wipers on double speeds is all they'd have to put it on in court. <laughs> yeah, and then I go, oh, every time I see, I must say, I've not had a speeding ticket for 20 years, right, and since I got this, I went, every camera I got, I actually went and sped up on purpose, yeah, because I wanted to try my paperwork, see if they work, yeah. Anyway, to the extent of going over half one in the morning, I went through in its light and this camera went off. I, thought, I looked at the clock and we were only doing 36. I thought, oh, that's not good. So I turned around and went through a minute later doing 46. I thought, that's not good. So I drove back down the road and two minutes later I come back and doing about 56. So I got three, three tickets in four, four minutes home, whatever it worked out. <laughs> three minutes. Well, the claim of right basically is we all stand under common law if you, if you live in Britain. Yeah? Now, the, the basic common law is, is quite simple, really. And if everyone could abide by the common law, then there'd be no reason for having any other law, yeah? yeah? Now, the four concepts of the common law, to my understanding, are you, you don't injure or wound in any way, shape, or form, being mental, physical, yeah? You don't vandalize property, you don't 
fraud on a contract will rip anybody off, yeah, and you don't thieve. And apart from them, yeah, there's no other laws you have to stand under, unless they're legislated rule. Now what I've done is, when you put a claim right, I have claimed a right for free trade exchange and bar bar barter, yeah, I've, um, it's, you're, you're writing your own law. Yeah, and you, you're putting it down, and as you send it as an affidavit, and they, they note it down and put it on the record, and that is your private contract. So anything you put in your private contract is your personal law, and it stands for yourself, the man, between the man and the corporation. I suggest to anybody, yeah, is, is, you've got to look at Rob Menard's work, and read it and understand it, which it goes through and it explains your fee schedule, that is basically, if, if they want to come and talk to you, or they want you to respond to, to letters, they charge you for a letter, a letter, so you tell them what you're going to charge them for a letter. If they want you in court, you give them your price. I think I'm 500 quid an hour. In fact, it might be going up to you, I'm getting better at this law stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll be putting that on one of my claims, <laughs> yeah. But what, and your claim of right is, obviously, if they assault me in any way, shape or form, if they um, use any kind of spray against me or electronical device against me, my man and my body, yeah, I, I, I've given them, I think I've insured it for a million quid, yeah, but you can, you can, you can guard yourself about what, against what they're going to do. Yeah, so you're basically creating your own fee schedule. So if they want to take you to jail, I think I'm £5,000 an hour. Yeah, for if they're unlawfully detaining you, or kidnapping you. Yeah, but if you put your fee schedule in, and then when you're going through your process of your courts, yeah, you can add the fee schedule on your, you know, and close a copy, and, and work to your fee schedule. So if actually when you win your case, because you have to, if they follow their own due process, yeah? yeah, then you get paid out on your fee schedule just like the lawyer would get paid. What you're actually doing, when you're creating your private documents to, to either your claim a right, yeah, or to the Prime Minister, or if you had a problem with somebody, any, any man or woman for anything, or what you do is you send, send them a, a, an affidavit, a commercial affidavit, right, and all you're doing is you're suing them in the private, not going through the public sector. Because that's why you never win anything, because they're all in the same boat. This is why no police has ever been done for any of the killings that's been done in custody, because their own people are searching. Yeah, but you can do it in the private, and this is what you're actually doing with your commercial liens. Yeah? Now, if you serve someone a letter, yeah? The honourable time is 21 days. What, that's what they do in their law, so... Whatever point you've got, say, for example, you've been pulled over on car, in car, you've been unlawfully detained. So what you do, you, you write an affidavit, which is basically a statement of the truth, which is your truth, right? So what you do is write exactly what's happened, as though you were writing it in your diary, but it's got to be worth, you know, as much information, the better, point to point. So I was, I was pulled over unlawfully by so and so, so and so. They asked me to produce this, as I said whatever, but you have to go in word for, for word. Like when you, if you've ever been done in your writing a statement, it's just your statement, but it's your truth. Yeah, so then, you was unlawfully assaulted when they put the handcuffs on you. Yeah, you was off, then unlawfully put into a police vehicle and transported to whatever station. You were unlawfully detained there. Point to point, you put your your, in your words, then what you do is you serve that to whoever's done it and you give them the 21 days for it to come back, yeah, and challenge any point on there, yeah, which they can't because it's your truth, yeah, so then what happens after the 21 days you send them what's known as a notice of default, which is confirmation of they haven't rebutted anything or challenged anything in that the previous document, so therefore because they haven't challenged it, by an old law, uh, an old, a law of acquiescence, by a stopple, that is a lawful document. But the first document is only lawful once you serve the notice of default. There's no point sending the first document, because without the second it's not worth nothing. Now I must say now, and this is something that we've only just found out, right? 
complaint. What you're doing is that's your complaint, but a proper complaint is, is known as a bill of exchange.